outlier. Definition 1. Something that is situated away from or classed differently from a main or related body. 2. A statistical observation that is markedly different in value from the others of a sample. Have you ever thought about what makes a person so successful? What makes Asians so smart? Or perhaps what almost no star hockey players were born in the fall? In Outliers, the story of success, Malcolm Gladwell takes you from Michigan to Dubai, exploring, analyzing, and interpreting many success and failure stories. Gladwell's purpose in writing this book is to inform the readers of what it takes to become successful. His use of statistics and evidence to prove his points makes the book a very reliable read. Gladwell is trying to prove that success isn't simply the outcome of hard work. You need to have opportunity and positivity, the right birth date and family background, and most importantly, the right upbringing to know what will get you farthest in life. Many problems are covered from chapter to chapter. However, the main problem of the book is that people today aren't being prepared correctly to be successful, which is bringing our country down. I completely agree with Gladwell and his statement. While reading the book, there were some points when I couldn't bring myself to believe what he was saying. But upon later inspection, it all makes sense. For example, it makes sense that plane crashes happen more frequently with airlines from countries where you are trained not to speak up to a higher official. If something is wrong with a plane, assistants would be too afraid to tell the pilot, therefore putting the entire flight in danger. The book is very clearly written and is organized topically. Each chapter is labeled with a topic that Gladwell believes leads to a successful person. Within each chapter, he uncovers many stories of lawyers, pilots, and so-called geniuses by using numbers to separate each subtopic. These stories include experiments that doctors have done and stories of how certain successful figures came to be. These mini-stories always relate back to the larger topic of the chapter, which makes it easy to read and hard to forget what Gladwell is trying to portray. He's trying to portray the goal which is clearly to inform his audience, which would be mainly parents, about the ways people can become successful. He achieves this goal well, providing clear points and research to back them up. In the first chapter, Gladwell proves that having a birth date in the beginning of the year helps professional hockey players become successful. He provides a chart showing all of the players on the 2007 Medicine Hat Tigers and their birth dates. An incredible number of the players were born in January, February, and March. This is also the case for every other team in Canadian professional hockey. Gladwell tells us the explanation for this is quite simple. It has nothing to do with astrology, nor is there anything magical about the first three months of the year. It's simply that in Canada, the eligibility cutoff date for age class hockey is January 1st. A boy who turns 10 on January 2nd, then, could be playing alongside someone who doesn't turn 10 until the end of the year. And at that age, in pre-adolescence, a 12-month gap in age represents an enormous difference in physical maturity. Another example of a point Gladwell proves is that opportunities of your generation help significantly in becoming successful. In Chapter 2, Gladwell tells the story of Bill Gates. When Gates attended school, there was a computer terminal built that him and his friends took control of. This was in 1968. Most colleges didn't even have computer clubs during this time period, which gave Gates a huge advantage. He learned how to work and program very quickly, putting himself ahead of most of the nation in the field. He was given a huge opportunity by attending one of the only schools with a computer club, which he couldn't have gotten if he wasn't born at the time that he was. This opportunity led him to becoming extremely rich and successful, which proves Gladwell's point that that opportunity, come along with a specific generation, does have an effect on the amount of success of that generation. Outliers suggest a multitude of things for the reader. While reading, I counted 13 different possible reasons as to why a person has become successful. Gladwell doesn't make the reader believe these points, so it's easy to disagree with it. However, he does a good job with persuading that what he says is true. To do this, he uses a lot of repetition to stress his findings. It is very effective because it gets the points into your head. It makes you think about them every time you come across the same idea. Gladwell wants to get us thinking about this. Because of that, he leaves out stating that what he says is absolutely true. He never says that the points that he brings up are the only way people can become successful. I like that he did that. It leaves the book up for interpretation. The reader can choose whether they believe it or not, and then they can decide to act upon their decision. This also attracts more people to his books, because he doesn't act like he knows everything. He simply presents the facts, 
and lets the reader take it from there. I found some other books that are about the same topic of success. Books like Rich Dad's Success Stories, Real Life Success Stories from Real Life People Who Follow the Rich Dad Lesson, seem to be much more motivational and try to help readers to become successful. There are tons of motivational books out there, however, Outliers isn't like them. Outliers is based much more on presenting the facts. Gladwell did many experiments and extensive research to make this book, and it really shows. He doesn't straight out give tips to the reader on how they become successful. He does it much more subtly. He presents graphs and charts showing what makes someone successful, only hoping that the reader will pick up on it. His book is also more about what parents can do to help their children become successful, not what the parents can do themselves. The TV club's Gladwell presents a new opinion, that being successful when you're older starts with what your life is like when you're little. I liked this aspect of the book. It was a new idea that I hadn't heard of before. The aspect I liked least of the book, however, was that Gladwell tended to drag the chapters on and on. He didn't simply state his point. He went on for a while providing facts and proving it. In some chapters it seemed like too much, and he could have shortened them. However, my favorite part of the book was learning about all of the success stories that Gladwell presented. Before reading, I didn't know how the Beatles came to be, and I did wonder why Asians are so good at math. Outliers informed me a lot, and I really enjoyed learning. In conclusion, I recommend Outliers, the story of success to everyone. It's a fantastic read, and I learned a lot about what can make someone